name is Tebe Magugu. I am a women's wear designer based in Johannesburg, South Africa. My name is Martine Rose and I'm a men's wear designer based in London. Martine, I'm so excited to chat to you um, and thanks again for agreeing. Oh, um, me too, it's a pleasure. Uh, I, my first question is mm -hmm. what sparked your interest in fashion? Was there like a big aha moment or was it a series of small events? My interest in fashion came through music and uh, club culture because I have a really big extended family. So um, watching my cousins and my sisters and my you know, my uh, brother get ready to go out, to go to clubs mm -hmm. and sitting on the end of the bed and just thinking, oh my God, <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> and looking at all the different, you know, they, they were all really into different seat, different music, um, yeah. like reggae. And that was, it was 1989. So there was a, a big rave sort of second summer of love. So my cousin was really into rave music. So watching them get ready to go out, that was the thing. I actually completely um, re relate to that. Uh, so, really, with, on, on on my side, um, I grew up with a fam like family of women. So it was my grandmother, my mother, and my aunt. And whenever one of them would sort of uh, buy a new like vintage piece somewhere yeah. or, or get something new, they'd like lay it on the bed, and we'd all sort of huddle around. <gasps> And talk about you know yeah. how it should be styled and my mom where you're gonna wear far. it to yeah. exactly my mom actually took it quite far because she'd be like what personality should she bring out should she be rude oh my gosh be oh, like she, yeah. oh, I love that. <laughs> so I completely get what you mean by that those little moments yeah. that's to something bigger so it's like the connection to people and culture and and that's what i find really interesting about yeah. clothes do you know what i mean you wear them you can't get closer to anything do you know what i mean you wear them literally next to your skin exactly it's such a, they're so intimate and they create intimate moments like you said like standing around the bed or looking at you know a new dress or mm -hmm. chatting about what character you're going to be when you wear it i love that <laughs> it's very it's very personal it's so cool um, yeah what do you think it is about fashion that allows people who feel othered or like uh, feel like they've been sort of made to be feel like outsiders feel yeah. so embraced by the industry? It's funny, isn't it? Um, because that is what attracted me uh, to fashion in the first place was this, this sense of sort of a collective otherness. And I guess it is about self-expression ultimately that's what clothes are you know mm -hmm. it's built on that it's built on self-expression it's built on otherness it's built on difference it's built on the outsiders as inclusive as fashion can be its ability to draw people and tell them that their time is over is so cruel i mean i wanted to find out yeah. how you create that strength within yourself to soldier on in such a fickle industry i've always been a bit ambivalent about the industry I've, I've never really fully immersed myself in the industry. Like you said, when I finished school, I didn't necessarily feel like an outsider, but I didn't really feel like I'd found my people. And when I went to art school and then on to fashion school, I felt like I'd found them, like that was it. And uh -huh. that sort of sense has really continued. It's like, I don't, I don't buy into the industry in the same, in the same way. And, and I guess in a, in a sort of like hook, line and sinker, do I read, you know, am I kept awake by bad reviews? Am I kept, am I sort of dictated to by the whims of the industry? No, I, I don't. I, I find that I'm on, I'm based in, 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 in South, like in, in Johannesburg. And when I do travel for like work, I, I would go to, to Paris for like the presentation and like the showroom. And then like one of the best moments is coming back to Johannesburg into some yeah. sort of a, like getting out, I only participate in that in that world for like two weeks, you know. And if it um, is enough, right? You sort of like dip in and you're like, oh, and then I can come home to you know yeah, a sense of, of reality and my and my team at the at the at the studio. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I think I have, to have those sort of boundaries and those sort of walls, protect protective buffers around yourself in that in that sense. Yeah, there isn't a magic formula except except. I, I've just never, I just don't listen to people that much. Yeah. Just ignore them. 
That's the best. Just ignore them. <laughs> I, I I never got over your SS15 where it was literally one. You know, I've, never, I've never gotten a lot of things from you, like the the square the 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 square toe shoes, like a lot of things. But no. that, that, that was like one of those um, moments that sort of stopped me in in my tracks. I wanted to get to know more about that about that collection. And if you think um, there is an overproduction issue um, in our industry, of course. Oh my God, of course. And it's like. It's um, it's a question that we're faced with more and more and more. The consumer is becoming really, really aware aware of it, you know, and they're and they're buying more consciously and stuff. So it's one hundred percent. Of course, we overproduce, we overconsume, we over everything. Yeah, the 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 one look was it sort of a, a a commentary on that, or was that all you had to like say for that season? Was that like you know this one look is what all I have to say? And you know that that's that, how I spun it. That's how I spun it. But babes, I didn't have any money. That was it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that was yeah. it. It was like yeah. I was like, oh no no, who needs more than one look anyway? You can only mm-hmm. wear one look. It's <laughs> one look this season. That's it. That was but all that's so I brave. Could <laughs> that is so brave instead of sort of stressing um about it and 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 borrowing money and doing all these sort of crazy yeah. crazy just like looking at your your situation and what's happening immediately yeah. and being like this is what can happen and deal with that's it that's what i'm that's, doing i know. You know i mean i did i did say that it was like only the, you know there was only one look because that's all that matters yeah that's all that i had to say this is the one important look but it was basically because i had 10 pounds to rub together Love that. I think keeping a sense of humor about everything mm-hmm. really, really, really helps. It helps you protect you from the cruelty as well, you know. And it helps it helps you to keep a level head about stuff because it is frocks. There's there's a level of wit to it, I think. There's a level of intri- yeah. like humor, you know, and I think people yeah. should that a bit a bit more I totally agree. Um so switching things up, I've had a few friends um who, who say that having children um, changed quite a few aspects of their own careers, um, especially mm-hmm. my friends in the creative discipline. And I wanted to know, you know, you, you have two children now, mm-hmm. how has family impacted your aesthetic, uh, if it has at all? I feel like I've had other elements added to me. So it's not, and nothing's been taken away. I feel like something's been added. Um, but I don't know, I don't know, I might, I give, even less of a shit what people think now. Yeah. <laughs> I really care about what well. they I think. Yeah. That as well. yeah. Yeah, I think I think it, it gives you like another layer of like um well, somehow somehow resilience or bravery or something. Yeah, you care less because you have your focus is so sort of shifted. The funny thing is I've always found um and I find it funnier as I get older when you're young you think that um as you get old or as you get older your tastes mature and you something changes and you're you know you you move away from what you were interested in when you were young into like and being interested into different things as you grow up and uh at, that is not true and i remember my dad saying it to me that um, once he always gets a bit of a shock when he walks past a mirror because what he sees doesn't match how he feels. And now as I'm getting older, like, I really get it. I get the sort of like old guy in the club now. Oh, I get that old girl in the club. Because it's like, you're st- and that's the cruel thing about getting old is that you're still into it all. I find it, I find it interesting as I get older. It's, it's um, that, that never changes. Mm. People in our industry have no concept of, of of working hours. You know what we do becomes a lifestyle in a way, like yeah. or becomes our our life. And I wanted yeah. to know if at some point you had to split um, Martin yeah. Rose, you know, as you know, the a person, person from Martin the brand. Rose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have since having children, I have got more of a, a work life balance, probably a little a little bit more balanced than I did before. <laughs> there was no work life balance. It was all one big mush. I always make the joke that I have to do fashion because I'm equipped literally for nothing else. You know? Yeah, no, no, I know that's, that's 
That is exactly what I said. That is exactly what I said. Like, yeah. I'm not very good at anything else. I just like exactly. this. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I wanted to explore a, a few more hobbies, and I realized yeah. recently that I love quad biking so much. Oh my you god! Know? What a great I know. one! I never would have thought. Oh my god, that's um, so I good. Like, I, I know. <laughs> good thought. Um, things like uh, things like that, you know, um, that don't have to become like a like a like a job or or something, no. or something sort of financially. Um, you know, you go into like thinking, oh, how can I make money out of this? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like just something to pass the time. Just you joyful. Know? Like it's just really joyful. Important. Exactly. That's so interesting that you say that, you know, because um, I used to swim competitively when I was, um, yeah, up until I was about uh, probably until I discovered sort of boys and drinking. Mm. And in lockdown, I've rediscovered it. It's bought, it's bought, something else to my life actually another mm. like space element. or something yeah. another element yeah there's something about the times we're in where everyone can't do something just for the sake of enjoyment it's like it has to sort of yeah. become a business now a business. House, you know? totally yeah fashion was not a commercial option you know what i mean it was like it was it wasn't i never really thought about this being a business i just did it because i liked it and it ended up sort of turning into something and turning yeah. into a business, but it was, that wasn't the motivation. It wasn't, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. It, it had, there has been a shift definitely that um, it's now this sort of big business, mm. big business, big business. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my next question is, yeah. uh, would you, act, would you call fashion art um, or do you find it to be its own creative discipline? That's a really, yeah. really fantastic question. And I've definitely asked it, asked it myself before. Um, and art in terms of sort of like painting or sculpture or anything, you just produce one, right? It's just, you don't, with fashion, there's, it has to, it, exactly, it has to, it is a form of expression, but it has to function in so many different ways. It has to work. The concepts are artistic. The stories are artistic, the sto but the outcome is not art, right? The process is is, <clears throat> is art, right? I think it, I think yeah. it might be that. I mean, I'm I'm sort of like thinking as I'm talking. I don't I don't know, but like, <laughs> yeah. is it that? Is it like more that, that I think the process is is probably a similar process to a painter or a sculptor and stuff, but mm. what? The, but the outcome is prod is product. We, we both use this idea of, 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 a, of an initial concept, but then I think the mediums are different actually. With art, it's like, it comes through through like, that concept is communicated through like painting or sculpture or, yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. And with us, that yeah. concept is communicated through, through the clothes we do. So I think, I, I yeah. do think the two are their own, their own um, thing. I think, I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's blurry. It's not. It's not black and white for sure. Yeah. There's a little like sort of a misty area between the two. That, and I think I could equally argue that um, the other way. You know what I mean? That yeah, maybe yeah. that it's the same thing. It's the same form. It's a tricky um, one. It's a tricky one though. Yeah. Sometimes I struggle with how fashion sometimes makes its designers um, celebrities and compartmentalizes them as bigger than life or recluses you know it's these sort of extremes that are still performances in a, in a lot of ways I wanted to find and I think you actually touched on it earlier if you yeah. have to be precious to hold yourself in a certain way or to be seen in a in a particular way and I think given the fact that we both use our names as our brand names we don't have a yeah. lot to hide behind no you know? yeah that's very true yeah it feels it feels very sort of an, an outdated mode doesn't it of, of fashion it feels it feels very binary you're you have to be extravagant or right from the beginning of my career when I set up the label and stuff I didn't really subscribe to all of those very simple notions of what a designer was it's complicated tortured or you know um artist artist if someone recognizes me or something or knows or no, I'm always really a bit mortified 
sort of, or a bit embarrassed. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I just feel a bit. <laughs> I, find, I just find it a really embarrassing. I don't. I, that's not something. That's actually the least yeah. favorite part of it. I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, like, no. it, it's, always, it's always really flattering. Don't get me wrong. It's like because on the whole, people are really kind and um, yeah. and uh, really uh, really nice. But it's definitely not the part that I enjoy at all. As a final question, what would what word of advice would you give um, someone at the beginning of their career? Oh shit! Um, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Full stop. Um, <laughs> That's a really good question. Again, it's difficult to pick it out, but I will give you a word of advice that someone gave me once. Business is really just people. It, it honestly, it honestly is. And if you can mm. pay attention to people, don't worry about the business. The business will, the business will happen. The business yeah. is happening because the business is people. Pay attention to people, and also, it just be mindful of people. Mm, wow, that is fantastic. I'm adding that to my list. That is so fantastic. And oh. I think it's an incredible way um, to, to, to end this. Um, thank you so much for chatting. Oh, I've enjoyed it hugely. This was really thank great. You. Yeah. yeah, I wish you the very, very best. I really do. Thank you, Martine. Thank you.